we're going to go to our ChatGPT presentation. And this question is all about answering the question, what is ChatGPT? What is this thing all about? And more importantly, how can I use it to improve my work? And I want to stress that while we are a technology company, we train people in tech, the stuff we're going to go over with in ChatGPT applies to whatever task you do, whether it's for a living or your own private research or whatever it is, whatever work you do, there is usually a way for ChatGPT to make it easier. It's not going to solve everything for you. And I'll show you some limitations involved. But this presentation is all about what is ChatGPT and how can you use it to improve your work. If you already have a ChatGPT account, great. If you don't, it only takes about two minutes tops to get a free ChatGPT account. And the free account is totally fine. Okay, so let's go over some basics. I'm going to take a moment for people to read this, and then I'll go through some details on it. It's all about what is a chatbot. All right, so I actually want to start with the bottom sentence there that says early chatbots were basically like choose your own adventure books. If you weren't lucky enough to read choose your own adventure books when you were a kid, I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. It was so cool. You could read along in a story and you make decisions. And based on your decision, it would tell you to go to one of either two different pages in the book and you jump ahead to a certain page and read through what happens. You have to make decisions, right? Well, early chatbots, before the advent of, of like ChatGPT and similar technologies, they were basically like a choose, choose your own adventure book where you, as the creator of the chatbot, had to anticipate the possible choices that the user of the chatbot might make, and you were only able to provide responses based on what selections were available to the person, to the user. So you're kind of restricting the user to answer yes, no kind of questions. Very simple, like only one of two choices kind of questions, right? And so you would basically have, if this you know, question from the user, then this response. That's really how they worked. Now, they're a lot more complex now, and we're gonna explain how they're able to be more complex. But chatbots have been around as a technology for dozens of years. It's just recently that they got a lot more capable, and we'll see why. And it starts with understanding what a language model is. Now, this whole subject is under the umbrella of artificial intelligence, basically utilizing computers to simulate real thinking by real human beings. And before we go one step further, I want to clarify something. Even though the technology industry and the media are calling this whole subject artificial intelligence, I want to stress the computers are not intelligent. To be more precise, they're not alive. They can't actually think. They have no spark of life in them. And more importantly, they cannot create something without being told to create it. Now, these tools, these artificial intelligence tools, have gotten so complex that it can look like they're thinking. But do not make the mistake of thinking they're doing so. The way they you know, simulate that thinking behavior is pretty cool, but computers can't think. All right, so what's a language model? It is a type of artificial intelligence, and it's trained to understand and generate human language. This type of artificial intelligence, this type of computer program, is trained on human language. Now, we'll go into what that training means in a bit here, but this tool is all about human language. The way these artificial intelligence tools work, the way this language model works, is it will suck in a tremendous amount of text. And because of the programming behind it, it will actually learn the patterns and structures of language. Things like grammar, vocabulary, common phrases. It's just taking the powerful tools of artificial intelligence and applying them to the area of written human language. So that's what a language model is. Once you've trained a language model, it can predict words. Now, I want to stress something. And again, this is all about how we teach at the school. If you can break a concept down to its most simple form, and then add on complexity after that, it makes it so much easier to use that concept. At its core, all a language model does is predict the next most logical word. Now, it does it super fast, but that's all that's actually occurring inside a language model. You have fed a bunch of language into it, and when you ask it to do some work, the work it's doing is simply predicting the first word that should come out as a response, 
and then the second and the third and the fourth and so on. So it can predict the next word in a sentence. It can complete a prompt, it complete a question you're asking of it, or it can generate entirely new pieces of text. And here's the cool part. That text will be coherent. It'll be understandable. It will be relevant to the context that you're operating in. But it's an amazing tool. But at its core, all it does is predict words in certain patterns. Those patterns obey the rules of human language. So that's a language model. What are we using them for? Well, a lot of things. You can use them to translate from one language to another. You can, use them gen you can use them to generate a lot of text. And you can use them as the underlying basis of these tools, these chatbot tools like ChatGPT. And by the way, there's a number of these on the market. ChatGPT is just the most popular. So that's a language model. Now here's another word from this whole area. What's a transformer? Well, lots of words in English have multiple meanings. Transformer in electricity means a device that will drop, it'll take electricity at one level of voltage and either raise it or lower it in voltage. That's why up on these you know, telephone poles and utility poles around your neighborhood, you see these big round cylinders, they're called transformers, and they are taking electricity that comes in from the power plant that's really high voltage, and it's dropping it down to the voltage you need in your home. That's not what this transformer is, but it does involve changing things. It is an artificial intelligence model, and it's really crucial for working with human language. And here's what it does. It has a feature that's called an attention mechanism. This was a huge development. This feature, this specialized aspect of the computer program lets the program consider all of the words in a sentence simultaneously. Now that may sound simple because it is when we do it as human beings, but to get a computer to take in a full sentence and understand the relationship of every word in that sentence to every other word in that sentence is a big accomplishment. And what it does is it opens up the ability for a computer program to actually grasp context and word relationships. And if you think about the idea that a um, language model is tasked with predicting the next word, understanding the whole concept of a sentence would be a key aspect of getting that to occur. And that's what a transformer does. Again, it's just a computer program. It's a pretty complex program, but it's just a computer program. So now if we bring all this together, we've talked about what a chatbot is. We've talked about what a language model is and what a transformer is. So what's ChatGPT? It's a language model. It's specifically, it's a language model called the GPT, a generative pre-trained transformer. Generative meaning its sole, its main purpose is to generate text, to generate human language. Pre-trained meaning it was trained on a ton, and I mean an absolute ton of data and transformer. Let's go back. It's a transformer in that it's able to work with full sentences. So that's what a GPT is. It's a language model. It was developed by this company called OpenAI, and it has been fine-tuned. Now, without getting all nerdy, that just means that we're going to focus in the purpose of the tool and, more importantly, the kind of output that's going to come from the tool. The output that this thing is supposed to generate is conversational text. And those of you who have used ChatGPT know that you can talk back and forth with it. It's, it's a conversation, right? So it can understand and generate human-like responses in this chat format, this conversational format, which means you can talk to it, quote unquote, on a bunch of topics because it's been trained on a massive set of data billions upon billions of sentences gathered from all over the internet. So that's what ChatGPT is. Because it's been trained on this wide range of internet text, it can answer your questions, it can provide explanations, and it can engage in a discussion that's very similar to what would happen if you were happy to be talking to an expert in a specific discipline. This is how you work with it. You work with, with ChatGPT and any language model, you work with it with, it with a thing called a prompt. This is a piece of text that the model is going to use 
as its starting point to generate a response. Remember that this tool is all about generating one word and then the next word and then the next word. All of these words are going to be formed the way human conversation is formed in full sentences with correct grammar, all that kind of thing. And the prompt is you're telling the tool, where do I start? I could generate all manner of text. Please tell me where to start. They can be a question. They can be just simply a statement, or they can even be incomplete sentences that you're asking the model to complete. And this thing can respond based on its training and the patterns it's learned. So it's been trained, i.e. had a bunch of data fed into it. It's been trained on a wide, wide range of subjects. And it learns patterns of human language. 